Hi folks, Max from HighOnAndroid.com where we get <laughs> on Android every day. Anyway, today let's talk about unrooting Android. What does unrooting Android mean? You guys probably wonder uh, what it actually means. Now, for me, uh, to me, there's actually a couple different ways of unrooting. The first is the simplest, is just unroot. Removes roots, uh, removes super SU, um, super user, and also SU binaries. Removing roots actually involves just two things, the SU binaries and also the super user APK. If you remove those, it removes root from your phone. For example, I've got the Droid Razor here. Uh, let's say you've rooted your phone and the only thing you did is give it root. And if you do the one click unroot using super SU, it'll be completely unrooted uh, back to stock. Now there are other cases um, let's say you've installed a custom ROM on this using a safe strap recovery. Um, just removing root won't completely unroot it. You'll have to also uninstall safe strap uh, before unrooting, then you'll be completely unrooted. Now, there are cases uh, with phones like the Note 2 uh, or the S3 I've got here. These phones, usually when you root your phone, you probably install a custom recovery like Twerp or Clockwork My Recovery, uh, which allows you to do you know stuff like backup your ROM, restore your ROM, or even install custom ROMs. And sometimes you might even be on a custom ROM, and maybe you didn't make a backup of your stock ROM. Uh, what do you do then? You can still use the uh, one-click unroot method to unroot your Note 2 or the S3. Now that will still leave the custom recovery twerp or clock run recovery on your phone so it's not completely unrooted. Um, you can simply reinstall the stock recovery using Odin and the stock recovery. I have it for the I have instructions on my site for the Galaxy Note 2 at Galaxy Note 2 root.com and also Galaxy S3 Galaxy S3 root.com. That's for the newer Samsung devices. Now if you're talking about the older devices like uh, Galaxy S2 here this one doesn't have a separate uh, recovery so if you want to get stock you'll have to reinstall the stock kernel now let's talk about an instance where um, you do have a custom uh, custom ROM installed with a custom recovery then how do you unroot it completely back to stock um, what you want to do is basically uh, use Odin and a stock firmware and flash it now also with the Samsung devices, there's this thing called binary counter. What are binary counters? They're basically binary counters whenever you flash a non a stock firmware or stock custom recovery, uh, it will increase the binary count. So if you have a custom recovery, your binary count probably went up. Um, a simple way to solve this, Chainfire, uh, XDA users Chainfire has made this easy tool called Triangle Way app. Um, simply download it from XDA for free or you can get it you can buy it on the market I bought it so I can use it all the time and simply run that before you unroot and uh, Samsung will never be able to tell you rooted your phone and you can completely um, unvoid the warranty and get your warranty back the beauty of Samsung devices so basically for the Samsung devices you just need Odin stock firmer uh, you can d download on my sites or you can go to samfirmware.com and uh, use that and you can get it completely completely back to stock all right let's talk about uh, HTC next I've got uh, 1x here in Evo 4 GLT how do you unroot the uh, HTC 1x or the uh, Evo 4 GLT or any of the HTC 1x devices you can still use the one click method if you somehow rooted um, your phone uh, and gave it root but most likely you probably went through HTCDev.com unlock your bootloader and then uh, install a custom recovery and then root it your phone. That's how the process works for most ACC phones. So how do you unroot it? Um, so basically if you want to return it for a warranty you'll have to run this thing called uh, RUU. Now with the ACC devices RUUs are very hard to find. Let me just take an example. This is a headache device because uh, ACC provides a different RUU for every different country. Uh, China, Japan, Korea, whatever, right? Um, so you have to find the correct country for your device, uh, otherwise it will not work out of the box. There's a way to hack it so you can install any country firmware, but um, sometimes it's hard to find uh, your country's firmware. So it's just a lost cause, it's just hard to unroot. Once you root, I don't actually recommend unrooting on the uh, 
the newer ACC devices. Another reason why I'm staying away from ACC, they make it locked down. And also another point to uh, point out is with the Samsung devices, you can flash an older firmware. Uh, let's say you want to go back to Gingerbread or ICS, you can just use Odin and flash it and it'll work. With the newer ACC devices, it has a bootloader that actually checks if the RUU you're installing is actually the same as the one you have or older. And uh, if it's older, it will not install. So that means once you upgrade to Jelly Bean, you'll never be able to go back to uh, ICS or Gingerbread. Um, same thing with Motorola. Motorola uses uh, this thing called RSD Lite, kind of like Odin Tool. Um, kind of like fast boot for Nexus devices and also uses uh, this thing called SBF files these are basically stock firmware files for Motorola devices uh, basically you need to download the SBF for um, you know certain Motorola device you have and you use uh, RSD Lite and flash the SBF just like using Odin with Samsung now the problem with that is it actually uses fast boot you have to put it into fast boot mode um, the thing with Motorola devices if you run out of battery while using um, while flashing SBF, uh, it will not recharge. It will not recharge. You have to have a working firmware. If something goes wrong, you're screwed, and you have to make this thing called Motorola Factory Cable, which I also have a video tutorial of. I'll have it in the description or on my site. You can check it out. Um, then it just becomes completely brick, kind of. It really sucks. Um, but with the RSD Lite, you can get it back completely back to stock. So you can just also with the Motorola, you have to use the correct version of SBF. Uh, if you use the older version, it will not work and you will end up in that brick state, which you don't like. And uh, lastly, let's talk about Nexus devices. The Nexus 4 or the uh, Nexus S or the Galaxy Nexus. Any of the Nexus devices are very easy to unroot back completely back to stock. Um, you can use Nexus firmware, original firmware that Google provides. For example, for, for the Nexus 4, you can download the original firmware, uh, simply run some fast boot commands, and it will get it completely back to stock. And also, you can relock the bootloader, uh, which will erase everything on your phone, make it completely back to stock. And also, when you send it back for warranty, Google or uh, LG will not know that uh, you've actually rooted your phone. Anyway, I wanted to just kind of give you a, a overall wrap up and uh, you know, for those of you who like to get serious about stuff, I hope you learned a little bit and if you have any questions about any certain devices and if I forgot to put the links or something, don't forget to leave in the comment section and I'll add it. And as always, don't forget to hit that like button here, subscribe button down there. And uh, if you like this, don't forget to share this with your friends on Twitter, Facebook or Google Plus, people who are high on Android. And I'll see you guys soon. Uh, stay high on Android. Yeah.